Hey guys, Camille Schreier, Miss America 2020 here. And I have to admit something to you. I really like food. Now, I don't know if this is just because I love science, but have you ever been eating? Maybe scrambled eggs, eating breakfast. And you kind of look down at your food and you wonder, what happens when you cook your food? So today I want you to join me in learning a little bit about the science behind your favorite foods. Okay, so if we're really gonna learn a little bit about the science of food, we need to learn a little bit of the background information regarding the biology and the chemistry of the food that we're actually eating. So here's the thing, the food that we eat really comes down to being made of macromolecules. And what macromolecules are, are really, really large bundles of atoms that are all clustered together. And there's four different types of macromolecules that are really the basis of all biological life. They're carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. And then our foods also have a little bit of vitamins and minerals in them, but they are considered micronutrients because they are super duper small. And here's the thing, we need all of these things to live. And each food that we eat has its own ratio of these different macromolecules. Maybe you've seen the nutrition facts on the back of a packaged food or something that you've eaten that breaks down how many carbohydrates are in that food. Maybe how much fat or how much sugar is in that food. That is because each food has its own ratio of these macromolecules. It's really important that we have a balance of these macromolecules in our diet to make sure that we are getting proper nutrition. And the different compositions of the foods that we eat actually affect the way that they cook. So I mentioned maybe I thought about how food was cooked when I was eating scrambled eggs. So if I put liquid eggs in a pan and they become solid, what's really happening? I think that we should go explore what happens when you cook an egg. Wanna come with me? Let's go. So what really even is an egg? Have you ever really thought about that? Some eggs are laid by female animals of many different species. Can you think of an animal that lays an egg? What about one other than a chicken? So some that come to mind for me are of course birds, but also reptiles, fish, also amphibians. All eggs might not look the same, but they all do serve a very similar purpose, and that is in the reproduction of that species of animal. What are these even made of? First, I wanna start with the shell. Now I have a brown egg and a white egg here, but they are made of the same thing. And the shell of this egg is made of something called calcium carbonate. The formula for calcium carbonate is CaCO3, and this is a mineral. And basically what the calcium carbonate does is it works to protect the egg, but it has over 17,000 pores in it. So what it does allow is for air and moisture to go in and out of the egg, but it keeps dirt, bacteria, dust, things that the egg doesn't want in it, it helps to keep out. If I were to take just the calcium carbonate shell off of this egg, you would run into a membrane. So there is a thin layer that is another protective layer underneath the egg's hard shell, and that is another way to keep bacteria and things that we don't want in the egg out. Now to see inside the egg, we need to crack it open. So let's grab a bowl. Can you do it with one hand is the question. Ah, look at me, that's a talent. But now we can see inside the egg. So we've broken through the shell, we broke through the membrane, and what I always notice first is the egg white. What the egg white is really called is albumin, and it's a huge mix of over 40 different proteins within the egg. It has a high water concentration, but it's full of protein, doesn't have a whole lot of fat in it, but it really surrounds the yolk. There are some stringy pieces that you'll see that kind of makes the egg white goopy, and that kind of helps stabilize the yolk within the egg when the egg is still together. And then we have the all-known, well-seen yolk of the egg. 
Usually yellow, it will change colors depending upon what breed of chicken is laying it or whatever species it is. It can go all the way from being a really light yellow to a dark, dark, almost an orange color, depending on the nutrients and the feed that the hen is eating and what the breed is. Now the yolk is a little bit more complex than the rest of the egg. It has a lot of different components. The yolk has fat, it does have proteins, but this is where all of the eggs, vitamins, and minerals are. So let's cook up this egg and watch what happens. So when we think about an egg, it's a great breakfast food. What you hear most often about an egg is that it's a protein-rich food. It's a great food for breakfast because it's a great source of protein to start your day. And that's exactly what affects the way that the egg cooks in a pan. And so you really have to look at the egg as it's cooking. You notice that the egg whites actually start to turn white. They have changed from being completely translucent and clear to being completely white and opaque. That is a huge visual change that we're seeing. But what is actually happening? Now I told you that that egg white had over 40 different types of proteins in it. We talked about proteins. They are long chains of amino acids and they have a particular shape. And that protein's structure keeps its function. But what happens if it loses its structure? What happens is it unravels. And that is exactly what we are seeing right now with this egg in the pan. The proteins in that egg white so far have started to denature. When proteins denature, they come apart and they lose their physical structure. They lose their shape and they lose their function. And once they start to lose their shape, they can get tangled with their neighbors and they start to form bonds with their neighbors. And that is why we see that move away from being a clear egg white to being opaque, but also from going from a liquid to a solid. But another interesting part about proteins is that each protein, although it has a specific function of its own, it also has its own temperature that it denatures. And so that's the temperature that it starts to unwind and break apart. And not all proteins have the same temperature that it does that at. So egg whites actually typically start to cook or denature faster than the egg yolk because of the proteins. Time to flip. So the longer that I actually cook this egg, the more that the proteins will denature. So the longer that you cook something that is protein rich, like an egg or like a steak, the tougher and more solid it will be and the texture will continue to change. So it's just about time for me to take my egg out. I like my eggs over easy, perfect, did not break my yolk. But let's take a minute to look at this. We have completely changed from a liquid that was clear and yellow to a solid piece that is protein rich. Our egg whites have completely solidified. I think that my egg yolk might still be a little bit runny, let's find out. So my egg yolk is still a little bit runny and that's for a couple reasons. Of course the egg yolk is a little bit thicker than the rest of my egg, so it would take a little bit longer to cook, but also those proteins don't denature at the same temperature that the egg white proteins do. So think of that the next time that you cook a runny egg. Proteins can denature for reasons other than just heat. If there is a high or low pH, so acidity or basicity, that can cause a protein to denature, or even physical agitation can make a protein break apart. So all proteins can denature. Our proteins can denature in our body, and that's what we worry about when we run a fever. Some fever is totally okay, but you've probably heard your doctor say that if your fever gets to a certain point, it can be dangerous, and you have to make sure that you go to your doctor. If your fever gets too high, your proteins in your body and different enzymes and functions of your body can stop working properly because those proteins can break down. But if you do get a fever and it does continue to go up, that is what we're worrying about. We want to make sure that your body's proteins are functioning normally. So the next time that you find yourself eating an egg, I hope that you remember that science really is all around us. Thank you.